So it's Monday the 20th of February and I apologise for my shaky arm, I haven't got my tripod, I'm just holding you with my hand which is quite shaky this morning. I've decided not to head down into the studio today so if you're not familiar with uh, how I work, so I work Tuesday to Saturday in the shop so obviously I have, as a small business owner, I run the physical shop on the high street in Seaton Tuesday to Saturday and then on Sunday and Monday I take a day off but on my days off <laughs> I don't always have proper days off. As a small business owner, if you're a small business owner watching, then you'll totally understand what I mean. My brain is always in the mindset of being a, a business owner and I'm always as a creative thinking of new designs and new products to make and things like that. So I am gonna take the day out of the studio. So I'm not gonna be in the studio today and I'm not gonna head down to the shop today. I'm gonna chill out on the sofa, I'm gonna pop probably Criminal Minds on in the background, one of my ultimate favourites. I have watched them all before, <laughs> but I'm gonna watch, I'm sort of part way through, I think I'm on uh, season five of watching, re-watching them all again. So when I'm working on designing or projects and things, I either watch YouTube videos of other small business owners that I really love. So people like Natasha, uh, Catnip, Emily Harvey, I think there's Ellis Jade, those are some of my ultimate favorite, ultimate favorite studio vloggers to watch. And so I either have that on in the background or I watch things like Criminal Minds and NCIS and that sort of stuff. And always like reruns when I watch those at home. And the reason is because I don't want to become distracted. If it's a new one, then I probably want to watch it. A summer watch program like that. I want to watch it and pay attention. Whereas if it's reruns of things that I've already watched before, then I can get on with my designing work and have that on in the background. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do today. I'm just feeling a bit exhausted. It's um, My children have just gone back to school. It's their first day back to school after half term. Um, my children are, well, 10 coming up 11 in June, and then my eldest son is coming up 13 in November, and it's hard work. <laughs> Almost teenagers, it's probably harder work than when they were toddlers. The 6 a.m. starts getting them up ready for school, getting them to the bus stop, getting them to walking them to the, the different schools because they're at two different schools at the moment. Uh, so yeah, it's hard work being a mum and running a small business and trying to sort of keep on top of things. So I'm really, really tired today and I think I'm just gonna take it easy and not force myself to do too much. And if I end up just half asleep on the sofa watching Criminal Minds, then that's okay. I need to stop thinking that I need to be working 24 seven. So yeah, normally I would say let's get on with the day, <laughs> but let's get on with a calm, relaxing day today. <laughs> Good morning, it is now Tuesday. <laughs> it's Tuesday the 21st of February and I have come into work today really feeling positive because there's lots of new things that have arrived that's gonna allow me to do so much more with the business and I'm really excited. So I have, first of all, received my new, I think it's called Munbin. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but my thermal label printer. So I'll give you a sneak peek of that now. This little intro clip is the setting up, unboxing, and the setting up of my new thermal label printer. And I've already used it to ship some orders, and I'm so pleased with it. Although, what I will say is that when I received it, there wasn't enough information for me to be able to straight away get using it with things like Etsy and Royal Mail. There were things I needed to know to be able to use the thermal label printer in terms of getting it set up size wise that I think I had to google essentially I had to put in you know how do i do this how do i do that and i think what i might do is a video a review stroke a this is the sort of troubleshoot things that i noticed that other people might struggle with so they might get really frustrated with it and give up but i didn't i kept looking 
And once you realize those really simple things, <laughs> the print is absolutely fantastic. So I'm really pleased with it. So, so far I've only used it to print shipping labels and I have been packaging my first order from Etsy. So I reopened my Etsy shop at the weekend I think it was. Just so far put on there the pin badges, a couple of the cards that go with the pin badges and a couple of the stickers. I haven't filled the Etsy shop yet, the majority of everything is still on my website but I opened it up as a sort of soft launch and what I'm doing now is putting on one or two listings a day and then at the end of February I'm going to do a proper Etsy shop launch. Yeah I got an order I think it was in 24 hours of loading it onto Etsy so I'm really really pleased that's obviously worked. I haven't had any other Etsy orders since then but I was really pleased to get one on there and I had my new packaging supplies. So I have also filmed for you my little packaging video, really pleased with how that went. I love the new boxes that I've got, so I've got these letterbox boxes in A6 and A5 which are perfect for the, sort of the main products that I ship. Uh, so pin badges, they fit so well in these A6 letter boxes um, with all of my sort of freebies that you get because you get a little postcard, a thank you card, which when you reverse it, it's got like a different image each, every 500 orders, you like a different thank you card. So yeah, it's um yeah, I'm really excited today. It's, I'm I'm just really happy with the progress that I'm making with the online side of the business. Obviously, the shop which I'm in right now and is open, and you know through doing everything this morning, so through opening the, the printer this morning and packaging the orders, I'm also serving customers in the shop. So it's quite. It's quite difficult really to show you that side of the business because obviously I don't want people <laughs> to find themselves in the videos and be frustrated with that. Unless of course you live locally and you want to come in and shop in the shop and you want to be on a video then I'll do that <laughs> that'll be quite fun. Yeah I really hope that you're enjoying watching these studio vlogs because I'm having such a great time filming them and I love watching them. It makes me feel so much less alone in the shop when it's like a quiet day. I stick on the studio vlogs and watch them through the day so I thought if I video myself and my work process and share that with you it's you know someone else someone different to watch who has a different sort of way of their business and I, I run the business differently to a lot of studio vloggers in that I've got the high street shop as well as online side of the business so I just thought it'd be interesting for you to be able to see a slightly different style of business yeah let's get on with the day I'll show you some of the things I did this morning and then I'll see what else we have to get on with today so at the moment while I'm feeling this it's about 12 o'clock so I've opened the label printer I've got some A5 card that's arrived today and some A5 mount board so I'm going to try printing some of my prints my art prints on A5 today I'm really excited to try that out and I have had to get myself some new ink because my printer uh, whenever it runs out of like one colour it won't pre need to print anything. I'm really happy with this printer. I think I could probably have a better printer for printing art prints. If you've got any recommendations for art print printers then let me know. I've it so far and for the level that I'm at at the moment it's working really well. On my um, Mundrum printer I've been trying to find either silver grey, sort of light grey to go with my theme. So either like slightly lighter than this grey labels or a nice green and I ordered these because on the screen they look like they would be more of a, a green that would work with the business but I think these are just too bright they don't really look like any of the greens because obviously I use mostly sage green and leaf greens I think I suppose it goes with the, <laughs> the spider plant but that's not the green I'm going for and it doesn't really fit with my branding so I'm gonna see if I can send these back if I can't send them back then I'll just have to use them and maybe I'll print things that will go on, on the back of packaging or something. I don't know. I'm not sure how I would use these um, because they're just not quite in the right colour for my packaging. But when I originally bought the Mundin print label printer, I saw that they did different colours and one of the colours was like a mint green and I thought actually mint green would be perfectly fine. That would go really well with my branding and then I can't find them anywhere. <laughs> I can't find the circular ones, the rectangular ones, nothing. At the moment I've only got uh, white and this green that isn't really the right green so I'm going to send this one back and hopefully get the whites of these. Yeah so let's get on with the day.
with printing boardless at the moment. Um, I had to do a printer uh, re-download of the drivers on my main Windows computer and so I can't print borderless on A4 on my Windows computer and for some reason, even on my iPad, when it comes to A5, I can't print borderless at all. I don't know how I feel about this. Does it put you off having a border on A5 prints? Um, should I then print them on A4, which I can do borderless and then cut them down? Or do you think they look okay with borders on for A5? Because I haven't done A5 prints before. This is the first time I'm doing A5 prints. I'm going to trial them in the shop like this and see how they go and then I'm going to see what I think before I put them onto like Etsy or the website and see if I get some feedback. I mean I think that actually looks really nice with the border. I just don't know, I'm really happy with the quality so this is 250 GSM smooth card and I'm really happy with the quality of the prints. It is purely just whether or not the border is going to put people off so yeah what do you think? I'm going to be packaging these. I'm waiting on the new A5 cello packs because I didn't have any. So at the moment, this one's just in A4 just to give me an idea of what it's going to look like. So there it is with this border. I've got this really good quality grey board that I put in the backs to keep them nice and sturdy when they're presented in the shop. So yeah, they're going to be packaged up like this. I'm waiting on some. Um, hopefully, I think I ordered the biodegradable ones of the cello packets in A5 and then they'll be packaged up with the backing board and um, yeah, put on display in the shop. So hopefully they're all right, but I don't know how I feel about this, this border situation. Hmm. So my tripod phone stand has given up and broken. I hadn't realized but at some point, the back part of this has um, fallen off and I haven't noticed. And so it's lost. And now it's on the wonk, doesn't hold straight and also it's not obviously secure if I want to do different movements with it. So I now need to buy a replacement phone stand for the tripod. I think it just attaches on the bottom part under there. So I think it's just this top part that I need. However, I can't remember when I purchased this. It's got to be years and years ago. So if you've got any recommendations for ones I should purchase, let me know in the comments because I'm keen to know what the best tripod stand for holding your iPhone is. Otherwise, it's going to take me a while to do a bit of research and find one online. But yeah, if you've got any recommendations for one that's going to hold my iPhone, because it's what I do a lot of my filming on at the moment, I can't afford to buy a posh camera yet. Um, so yeah, let me know if you've got any recommendations. Apologies for the angle of the camera, my tripod is broken and so you are balanced at the moment. I'm just about to close the shop, so it's the end of the day, it's thing that I've just made for myself. Now, I made these and then I realised the error after I printed them and instead of reprinting on wasting paper, because it's just something for me, I've just drawn a line on them. Just made myself some sales trackers quickly, but because I have three different income streams for my art and design by KB work, I wanted to do each different one. So I've got the total sales income made in store, total sales income made on Etsy, and total sales income made on the website. So, and this is only gonna be tracking my, specifically my art and design by KB um, income, because obviously the majority of my income is through Devon Art Supplies and Betty's Books, which are the trading names under my shop. So that's obviously my physical shop. So I have a limited company, Imagine Design Book Limited, and under that I trade as Devon Art Supplies, Betty's Books, and Art and Design by KB. And this year is the year that I really wanted to get back on top of Art and Design by KB and back working in a creative way because I feel like I, in previous years, especially last year, gave up on myself a little bit and sort of decided that I wasn't good enough to be selling my artwork, which is wrong of me considering I've been in this industry now for over 10 years and my artwork was selling really well. It wasn't even that the sales dropped that stopped me from doing it. It was just a complete lack of confidence and loss in confidence in sort of 2020, 2021. And then finally in 2022, when I just got rid of everything, I checked it all into the cupboard of doom. So yeah, I don't know what happened to me then, but it was just a complete breakdown, I think, mentally. And so, as I say, I lost all confidence. I took my Etsy shop down, which I'd literally only just started. I took everything off of the website and nearly everything of my own work in the shop, I just hid away and didn't have it on display. I think I just left a few of the cards out. Since I re 
started focusing again, it's been amazing. <laughs> I mean, the sales last week in store of my artwork and cards and pin badges were absolutely fantastic and nearly overran the sales of books. So yeah, it just goes to show that if you have a bit of confidence in yourself and you present your work and present yourself in a way of this is what I do, this is who I am and this is what I've made, if you have confidence in it, other people seem to sort of want to buy it more. I think the way I've put out displays in the shop has really helped because as I say, last week was the most amazing week for sales. I like bookmarks, notebooks, everything was just selling constantly every day and it was just fantastic. So yeah, I'm really pleased. And that's kind of one of the reasons why I wanted to do these sales trackers because I want to see the progression through the year, specifically the sales of my artwork and prints and pin badges, anything that's art and design by KB. So yeah, my little sales trackers. But as I say, I missed out a row of boxes, so I've just put a line through for now. <laughs> You'd think I would know these things better by now, but I'm always making these silly little mistakes. Really please. The day's been a good day in the shop. I've got loads done, and so I'm gonna. My children are just on the way home from school now, so I'm gonna close the shop down and have a nice relaxing evening with them, and then back to work tomorrow. I've got a big long to do list, so yeah. Wednesday the 22nd of February and I'm doing my best to be happy and chirpy and positive but in all honesty I've got a lot on my mind. We found out yesterday that my husband is likely to end up not having a job in May due to the company he works for closing selling. It's, yeah, it's all very complicated. So as positive as I want to be and as great as things are going here in the shop we need to work out whether it's possible for him to come to work in the shop full time. He obviously helps around the shop whenever he can, but I don't know if we're going to be, if we're growing at a rate fast enough to be able to bring him in as a, another full time employee, which has always been like a dream. We would always have loved to have worked together um, and have him here full time in the shop, but we just don't know if it's financially viable yet. We are still paying off our business loan from when we closed in the lockdowns. And so we wanted to sort of hold off for the next couple of years at least. And whilst he had a good solid full-time job and he was enjoying it, it made sense. I could handle everything in the shop. Things are growing and obviously I'm trying to do more for here on YouTube and I'm trying to do different Etsy channels now, the Art and Design by KB and the Imagine Design Create 2. And I do want to grow it so that we can employ him or at least have another employee because I was looking at having a part-time employee for the SEO and the internet side of the business and the online side of the business, but John isn't trained in those areas. So it's not like bringing someone in who can straight away add something new to the business. It would be a case of training him in the online side in, ter in terms of the website and Etsy so that he can load the orders, download the orders, package the orders and get them shipped out. And he could then manage the shop in terms of serving customers, doing the stock taking, the ordering and things like that. Whilst I film more YouTube videos, on a Patreon, uh, design more products and manufacture more products and things like that so there's a possibility but it just feels like there's a lot more pressure than there was yesterday um, before all of this became a thing so it's gone from sort of like enjoying the growth of the business and enjoying the designing more youtubing more and things like that to feeling like now okay you've got to put your business head on and be more serious about it like focus on the areas where the more money is going to come in so I've got to now go and assess the business and think, okay, where is the most money coming from? Is that Devon Art Supplies? Is that Betty's Books? Is that Art and Design by KB? Is it, which areas is it online? Is it in store? And that's where then I need to focus my time on wherever's bringing in more income because this is our livelihood. <laughs> this isn't like a sideline hobby business. This is a full-time everything all in, paying our mortgage, feeding the kids situation. So. Yeah, it's one of those crazy mornings. So if I'm a bit more sombre today than usual, that's why. <laughs>
Hiya. It is coming up the end of my working day. So it's 3.15 and the shop's still open at the moment because I don't have to go and get my youngest from school today. My husband's picking him up from school. Uh, so I just keep the shop open to wait at the last minute when they get home. It just means I can catch any extra sales here in the shop. Uh, if people are wandering around the town and they want to pop in, then the open sign is still out so they can still pop in. I did manage to get quite a lot done today, um, quite a lot of quite a lot off of my to-do list. So I needed to design some more mug designs for the sublimation, sublimation printer. So I got some designs done and got those printed. So printed some more A5 prints, although the Sally bags that I wanted to arrive today haven't actually arrived. So that is a bit of a pain. So I haven't managed to get my A5 prints packed yet today. It would have been nice to get those done. I need to get them photoed and I need to get them put onto C and also onto website. So A5 prints, although they have borders on, and I'm not 100% on whether they'll work well on Etsy. I am thinking I'm going to choose uh, two or three of my favourite ones and try those on there. So the dinosaur ones are already up on Etsy and the website because I absolutely love those and they work really well and it doesn't matter with the border because obviously it's a white background so it doesn't show too much. But yeah, so I'm going to have to think about it's worth putting all of the A5 designs and, and prints in general onto Etsy. I'm not really too sure, but I'd love to know what you think in terms of Etsy, whether it's worthwhile putting prints and things on there, or if it's oversaturated market on there, and if I should just stick with selling them in the shop here and on the website. But I'm going to probably wind this vlog up here. I think this is probably run to about the 30 minute mark, which is what I tend to keep the vlogs at, just so that they're not uh, too long for you. If you've watched all the way to the end, thanks for watching. Please do subscribe it really really helps and do talk to me in the comments i can't believe how quiet the comments are at the moment it's really really strange i'd love some interaction and i'd love to to get to know you all out there who are watching the videos so if you are watching to the end of this vlog thank you so much for watching please subscribe and please have a chat with me in the comments it would just be lovely to get to know you all and i will talk in my next vlog about patreon i've been umming and ahhing about reopening a patreon so i i i sort of started a patreon before and then i took it down straight away because i just got too scared i just thought i'm not good enough i'm not going to do it i've sorted out a patreon now and what i'm going to do and what i'm going to focus on with the patreon is sharing my experience as a shop owner and a small business owner um and then a little bit of my illustration and design and things like that but it's majority going to be a sort of a small business community for anyone that's interested in the owning a physical shop side of things i think it will be a really good place to build a community as well so i can i can offer something slightly different to what the majority of the vloggers and the patrons that I um, subbed with, I can offer something slightly different in that I can talk to you about owning a physical shop, the difference between renting and owning the shop, and because I've rented before and now I own this one, I can I can talk more about that over on Patreon. So you'll find me as Art and Design by KB on pretty much anywhere on social media and now on Patreon too. So more on that next time. And again, thanks for watching. Bye guys.